to tell you that last night I received a phone call from beyond the grave. <gasps> it was our departed friend, Kenny, calling from the depths of hell. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst things Eric Cartman has ever done. Will you donate one of your kidneys to Kyle? You only need <laughs> one, fat boy. <laughs> Dude, one of your friends is going to die. Don't you see how serious this is? For this list, we'll be looking at the worst of the worst things Cartman has done to anyone and everyone around him in South Park. Since plot points will be discussed, a spoiler alert is in effect. What do you think is the most despicable thing Cartman has done? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. He pretended to be psychic. Have you ever seen those old clips that show people trying to fly with giant wings attached to their arms? I don't know, that looks pretty high up. Yeah, I think it'd be better to start lower. Dude, I really don't think it's smart, Cartman. Cartman tried the same thing and landed himself in hospital. The police mistake his insight for being psychic, and from there, Eric puts on a show. Cartman spends the rest of the episode using food fantasies as fake psychic predictions to garner favor and fame with law enforcement. Ice cream, covered with chocolate sprinkles. Double step Oreos. It isn't the worst thing he's ever done, but it does illustrate just how badly he wants to feel far more important than he really is. Through his selfishness, innocent people are arrested, while the guilty roam free. I'm afraid that my powers are not for sale. And by that I mean they absolutely are for sale. Let's go! Number 19. He Tortured a Nanny Caesar Milan is a highly respected dog trainer who just so happens to get a job helping Cartman's mom tame her son. When good dogs go bad, there's one man who's their best friend. Milan's success with Eric comes from him treating him in the same fashion as he does his canine customers. Leanne only turns to him after Nanny 911 and Super Nanny fail miserably to curtail Cartman's behavior. This child's behavior is totally unacceptable. But there's no child too tough for Super Nanny. In just three days' time, you're going to see a new Eric Cartman. We've always known that Eric isn't keen on any kind of discipline, but spitting on someone or driving them into a mental institution brings his neurotic behavior to a whole new level. It's unfortunate Milan's treatment didn't last very long. And then we'll go to Target and I'll buy you a Mega Ranger. Could I perhaps have two Mega Rangers? Number 18. He drank Kenny's ashes. One of the running gags in season 6 was that Kenny's soul was stuck inside of Cartman. After seemingly dying for good near the end of season 5, we learned later he had been cremated. Here he is, boys, our dear little Kenny. You turned him into a teapot? Cartman mistakenly thinks Kenny's ashes are chocolate milk powder and mixes them into a drink. Unlike many of the other entries on this list, consuming Kenny may have been horrific, but at least it wasn't intentional. I don't think that chocolate milk mix agreed with my stomach. <laughs> Given the fact that far more outrageous things have been done in the real world, it's at least not as far-fetched as other things on this list. Saddam, I've been hearing rumors that you're secretly building weapons of mass destruction up here. Number 17. He created a church to con people out of money. Early in the show's run, South Park did a two-part episode focusing on how religious leaders can use fear to coerce young people into church. Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about hell. Hell is not a very nice place. Scared of ending up in hell, Cartman appears to start his own church to try and help his fellow classmates. All is not as it seems, however. After seeing a televangelist solicit money from his parishioners, Cartman starts asking his followers to give a dollar every time they attend. And now I'm receiving a message directly from God. God is telling me that each and every one of you is to walk up to the stage and give me one dollar. It's all one giant scam, as we see Cartman literally rolling around in his money. Forever obsessed with finding cash, we learn just how far he'll go to snag one more greenback. So we will build a new church with crystal walls, a ceiling 80 feet high, and a slide that connects this part to this part. Number 16, his PlayStation plot. 
If there's one thing we've learned about Cartman over the years, it's that he's undeniably selfish. Mom, I told you, the new Sony PSP game machine goes on sale at 7 a.m. today. I have to be the first to get one. Come on! This is on full display when Kenny gets his hands on a PlayStation Portable, which drives Cartman to show his true colors. After Kenny ends up in a coma, Cartman insists the game system should go to him. Who cares? Kenny's dead! When do I take possession of my PSP suit? In a nod to the Terry Schiavo case, Cartman pretends to want to ease Kenny's suffering by taking him off life support after being hit by an ice cream truck. Cartman has no interest in helping Kenny. All he wants is the video game machine, and we learn quickly he's willing to literally kill for it. You just want him dead so you can have a stupid PSP! Stupid? PSP is stupid? Did you all hear that? I, I mean, I mean, this isn't about PSP, Cap. Now that's downright cold. Number 15. He mistreated a little person. When this episode comes up in conversation, it's usually about Randy's terrible guess on Wheel of Fortune. Ten seconds, Mr. Marsh. Well, I know it, but I don't think I should say it. But there's a whole side plot around Cartman's treatment of a sensitivity spokesperson named David Nelson. As a little person, Cartman stops at nothing to poke fun at Nelson's disability. <laughs> Eric, Mr. Nielsen is concerned about how you respond to little people. <laughs> Laughing at the way he speaks, walks, and interacts, Cartman never once thinks of the consequences of what he's saying. Even when Nelson gets the kids to call Eric fat, he still doesn't see the irony in his behavior. They ultimately end up in a playground brawl to which Cartman still finds himself laughing at all of it. <laughs> Number 14. He locks Butters in a bomb shelter. It's Kyle's birthday, and for his party, he's taking his friends to the famed Casa Bonita restaurant. Being Cartman's favorite, he's immediately psyched to be going, only to have his dream shattered when Kyle tells him Butters is coming instead. I'm gonna take Butters. He invited me to his birthday party last month, so I owe him one. Butters? You're gonna take that butthole? Why? Cartman proceeds to trap Butters in a bomb shelter, all so he'll miss the party, and Kyle will bring Cartman along instead. No matter what happens, no matter what you hear, do not come out. If I don't make it back in time with the others, then it will be up to you to repopulate the Earth. It's yet another prime example of how Eric's selfish behavior is truly dangerous to those around him. All he's concerned about is getting what he wants and doing anything within his power to make that happen. Oh, really? What? Yes, I will certainly let him know. Thank you. Well, it appears that Eric here is responsible for Butters missing because he wanted to go to Casa Bonita. Number 13. His false claims about his mother. After pretending to have an iPad, Cartman is dismayed when his mother refuses to buy him a brand new one. Well, good going, Mom. You've completely screwed me over. Now feeling that his mom has screwed him over, he proceeds to publicly shame her in the worst possible way. His use of colorful language to describe her actions immediately evokes the wrong kind of reaction from those around him. Appearing on Dr. Phil, he uses the same choice of words, which to everyone else implies he was mistreated in some fashion. I want you all to meet Eric Cartman, who's a very special boy with a very hard life. The worst part is that he clearly knows what people think he's talking about and continues to proliferate a false narrative about what has happened. <laughs> Number 12. He refused to donate his kidney to Kyle. Ten million dollars was his price tag. Carmen, you are so going to hell when you die. Yes, well, until then. I need about 10 million dollars. Kyle needed a kidney, and Cartman was the only compatible donor. Even with as much disdain as Eric has shown Kyle, you would have thought he'd have a little bit of compassion for the boy. Instead, he was content to see Kyle suffer and almost die as a result of his kidney difficulties. Although Cartman's true dark side wouldn't emerge for another season, this was definitely a stepping stone in that direction. Give me back my kidney! Dude, please, Kyle needs it. It's me! Not yours, man! Give it back right now or there's gonna be hell to pay! It's made worse when you see how far Stan is willing to go to save his friend, all while Eric sits on the side asking what's in it for him. Number 11. He rigged the election. Carmen is hired by the Chinese to rig the 2012 election so Obama can force Disney to give Star Wars to them. You Cut the crap, Mouse. 
You only care about the election results because Romney would have been tougher on the Chinese. Of course, Eric doesn't do anything unless there's something in it for him. His demands are simple. He wants to play Luke's son in a future movie. So here's the deal, General Tsao, Mr. President. When the Chinese make the sequels, I get to play the part of Luke Skywalker's son. Cartman Skywalker. Throughout the episode, it's made clear that Cartman could care less about democracy and the right to vote. He's a nine-year-old kid who's focused entirely on getting what he wants. We're treated to a journey that shows how far he's willing to go to get whatever he sets his sight on. I don't think so, General Tsao. This way, officers! Number 10. He went on a rampage with Cthulhu. Cartman often sees himself as the hero. As we walked along the road to the grocery store, my coon sense started tingling. Something was wrong. Very wrong. I've learned to trust my coon sense. It has always been my guide. And in the case of Coon and Friends, he literally tries to make himself into one as the titular character. Unfortunately, the rest of the kids disagree with him and go off to form their own superhero club. Most children his age would get mad and then eventually get over it, but not Eric Cartman. And they all deserve to be sent to a dark oblivion! You can do that, right? Send people into a dark oblivion? Cause that's what those buttholes deserve! Instead, he summons the fictional character of Cthulhu and goes on a killing rampage all to get back at his friends for being mean. Sure, there's plenty of comedy to be found in the bed, but it certainly goes far beyond any kind of revenge the average person would take. Cthulhu, Cthulhu. Cthulhu, Cthulhu. Yeah! Number 9 he started a ginger uprising. No matter how you spin someone like Cartman, there's no escaping the fact that he's likely one of the most hate-filled characters on television. We've all seen him, on the playground, at the store, walking on the streets. They creep us out and make us feel sick to our stomachs. I'm talking, of course, about ginger kids. We've seen him exude distaste for various groups, and in this case, children with red hair. After being pranked by Kyle, Cartman appears to have become a ginger himself. Ah! Poopsicans? <laughs> Sweetie, what is... <gasps> It all backfires when he incites the other gingers around him to exterminate anyone who isn't as they are. Giant cages and lava pits aside, it's almost unfathomable how Cartman seems to turn on a dime in favor of killing people just because he feels he's been wronged. Cartman? Oh Jesus, I should have known! But we begin here! We will take worldwide! It illustrates just how disturbed he really is. Number 8. He Made Inappropriate Videos a whole lot could be said about those who take advantage of others who may not know any better. It's actually really great you're volunteering now because our other little boy volunteer is just finishing up. Oh, hey, Cal. In this season 15 episode, Cartman somehow manages to find a way to exploit others for his own personal gains. We made $1,000 in 11 days. Knowing full well these kids have been born into addiction, he purposely pits them against each other, all in the name of profit. What's even worse is that he somehow manages to convince Kyle, one of the straight shooters of the show, that what he's doing is okay. I got a job, Stan. I am making tons of money doing some really cool stuff. Doing what? Exploitation of any kind is awful, but it's far worse considering the ages of his victims. At least in the end, Cartman does lose out to a smarter businessman. Number 7. He Plowed Through Hippies If there's one thing Cartman hates more than Kyle, it's hippies. Yeah, they've been popping up all over the neighborhood lately. Miss Nelson next door had seven hippies in her basement, and they usually live in colonies. Never was this more apparent than in Season 9's Die Hippie Die. The town becomes overrun with the pot-smoking, drum-circle-pounding freeloaders, to which Cartman isn't having any of it. All right, in you go. What are you doing, man? Let us out! Get back, get back, or you're all gonna get maced! Sure, they do overtake the town and frustrate the locals, but that certainly isn't a reason to kill them off. With a plan to drive them out of town with death metal, we see the extent Cartman is willing to go to rid himself of their presence. His giant drill machine plows through the crowds like they're nothing more than a field of grass. We made it! Get to the PA system now! Number 6. He acted inappropriately towards Butters while he slept. As a kid, there are things you can get away with that would never be tolerated in the adult world. But this is nothing compared to what I have planned. Because tonight 
is going to be my coupe de grace. It's the sheer innocence and naivety of being young that offers a bit of protection we lose over the years. Still though, Cartman pushes the boundaries of acceptability when it comes to the other kids. What he means is that he's jealous that you've taken his place as my new best friend. But grow up, Kyle. Change is a part of life. Somewhere in Eric's head, he thinks that inappropriate photos he's taken of Butters in his sleep are somehow funny. He gets a laugh out of putting Butters in compromising positions and has no clue how highly offensive and violating it really is. It's played out in a comedic fashion, but clearly shows us how warped Cartman's mind really is. This picture you may find somewhat controversial. <laughs> Dude. Number 5. He Faked Having Tourette's Syndrome Upon learning what Tourette's Syndrome is, Cartman finds a way to make use of the illness to his advantage. Are you telling me that if you have this Tourette's Syndrome, you can say whatever you want all the time and never get in trouble? It's a neurological disorder. He can't help it. He spends most of this episode yelling and screaming out terrible hate speech, all while using his fake condition as an excuse. As offensive as Cartman can be, the cloak of his so-called illness gives him a golden ticket to get away with vocal atrocities he'd never otherwise be able to pull off. He never once considers the true weight of having such a condition. Will you knock it off already? Kyle, don't you think I wish I could? I'd give anything to be normal like you. That is, until his own fakery backfires as he starts spouting off random truths. Whatever enters my brain, I can just say without thinking about it. I wet my bed last night. It's one of the few times his sinister plans fall apart and he surprisingly seems happy about it. Number four, he becomes the new Fuhrer. For almost as long as the show has been on the air, audiences have seen Cartman direct plenty of negativity towards the Jewish faith. I've seen the Passion 34 times now, Kyle. You haven't seen it once. There's even one part where the Jews have a chance to save Jesus, and you know what they do? They let Barabbas, a serial killer, go free instead and laugh about it. Never was this more evidence than after Cartman saw The Passion of the Christ. He rallied lovers of the movies together under the premise of a fan club. In reality, Eric's intentions are far more dire than simply fanboying out over a movie. Yeah, Mom, I'm holding a meeting for all the people who love the passion as much as I did. Dressed as Hitler, he leads crowds of people in chants of anti-Semitism all while reveling in their adoration. It's a scary reminder of our own history, and even more disturbing to see it coming from a nine-year-old. Oh, mein Savior! Mein Führer! You're actually here! Mr. Gibson, I have assembled the masses. We are ready to do thy bidding. Have I been a good boy, Mr. Gibson? Number three, he faked his way into the Special Olympics. Cartman learns that the winner of the Special Olympics is awarded a $1,000 cash prize. You guys! You guys! I have the best idea ever! I'm gonna be rich! Ever obsessed with acquiring the mighty dollar, he thinks he can simply fake a disability to gain admittance to the game. We are then treated to a montage showing how he's taking all the stereotypes of disabilities and turning them into something to make money. Cartman, I will not stand by and let you cheat your way to winning the Special Olympics. Why? Because! What are you gonna do, Kyle? Tell on me? It never occurs to Eric that his lack of a disability is a gift that he should be thankful for. Carmen has no clue about the struggles of the people he's imitating, and how the Special Olympics celebrates their achievements. It's therefore a gift of karma when we see him fail spectacularly. Eric Cartman! Ah, screw you, hippies! Number two, he gave Kyle HIV. After hearing that Cartman has accidentally contracted HIV, Kyle bursts out into uncontrollable laughter. <laughs> Poor old Kyle, he's really taking it hard. Much like the audience, he sees Eric's new condition as a taste of karma given the terrible things he's done over the years. Who wouldn't want to see someone get a taste of their own medicine after a while? Eric Cartman, that's who. Enraged by Kyle's reaction, he purposely infects him with HIV, proving Cartman is nothing more than a selfish child with rage control issues. You know how serious this is? Well, Kyle, maybe I was just trying to prove a point. Ah! It's a terribly spiteful act that further illustrates the lengths Cartman is willing to go to to inflict misery into the lives of others. He gave me AIDS. What? He purposely infected me with his HIV virus. 
Is that true, Eric? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, his revenge went too far. How far would you go to get back at your worst enemy? So you can either give me back my $10 or I can go tell my mom on you. If you're Eric Cartman, you apparently go all in. Scott Tennerman is the quintessential tormentor that seems to have the upper hand against Eric for much of this season 5 episode. But it's the final minutes that turns the tide of Cartman's sadistic behavior. Yes, I'm afraid this isn't your chili, Scott. I switched it with chefs. It's delicious, chef. I hadn't planned on that. We always knew that he was mean, but resorting to murder and cannibalism goes far beyond anything audiences ever expected. Yet, even after all is said and done, seeing Cartman drink the tears of a distraught Scott just pushes the whole thing even further. It's here Cartman went from being just a mean kid to a full-blown sociopath. Do you like it? Do you like it, Scott? I call it Mr. and Mrs. Tenement Chili. Oh my god! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.